that might have been the most depressing, sad, boring, just dumb football game I ever watched. And I mean fucking ever, but at least we fucking won. Because if we would have lost, it would have been scorched earth for this organization. Fucking scorched. Now, funny enough, I probably would have rather us lost, honestly, in the long run. Because we would have been like the tenth or top ten pick in the draft next year as it currently stands if we would have lost. So, you know, more than likely have a higher draft pick next year for winning that one, but... Whatever. That also means we're at least still in the playoff hunt so that, you know, for the optimist out there, you've got something to look forward to. But, you know, for the um, the Debbie Downers like myself who uh, hate everything, this one, really, this was a a lose-lose situation for me even though we won, honestly. Because even though people say we won, we're – you know, even further up in the playoff hunt than we were, you know, if we just win, well, blah, 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 blah. Fuck all that. Fuck those people. We're not making the playoffs. Um, I really hope we don't even make the fucking playoffs with just how bad this team is. Because regardless, like, it's not even the fact that we won. It's We only won by two points to a Browns team that had, what, around 20 people either out with COVID or injuries. And I think it it jumps over 20 if you count the people who got injured during the game. So over 20 people in, in staff were out for the Browns. And we still looked like shit. I have the same feelings about this win that I had about the loss versus the the then like two and seven Giants or whatever they were uh, when that happened earlier. I have like it's the exact same feeling where it's like this team's garbage. It's awful. Um, thank God for Daniel Carlson. Uh, thank you Vikings for getting rid of him though. The dude's clutch rarely misses. I love him. He he reminds me of Seabass, but I honestly think he's better than Seabass from what I remember. Now, it's been a while with Seabass for me, so I'm sorry. And I love Seabass, but Carlson consistently making clutch fucking kicks when need be. I'm glad we extended him. I'm really glad we extended him. Um, I guess on to some of the other shit. I've got a possible hot take about this defense. It's been cooking up and it's been brewing for a few weeks, but I really just haven't wanted to say it because I know I'm going to look like an idiot when I do say it. But I've I finally decided that after this game, I'm going to say it. Even though they didn't play horrible this week, don't get me wrong. They didn't play horrible, but... <sighs> Against this Browns team who, once again, had 20-plus people out either with COVID or injuries, it was still a a bad performance, in my opinion, when you take that into account. So here's the possible hot take. If you take out Unique, Max, and Casey Hayward on this defense, which I know that's three key players, but if you took out those three people – this defense would be just as bad, if not worse, than some of the Paul Gumfer's defense that we saw in, you know, recent memories past. The interior defensive line is garbage. The linebackers are, when they're playing as a cohesive unit at 110%, they're okay at best. The other, like, even though Brandon Facian played well today and he's had his moments in the past, he's not consistently good enough to be considered good, in my opinion. He gets beat a lot by the better wide receivers when we play them. Like, he mainly just covered that number 11 kid today. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, buddy, for the Browns, but he was like their sixth round pick last year. And of course, he's their number one target, especially for today since uh, Landry was out. 
and he played well against him, don't get me wrong, but it still wasn't amazing. Like, and, and when he faced, like, if he would have went up against Landry today, it would have, he probably would have looked not as well, obviously. He has hope, don't get me wrong. He really does have hope. Um, along with Trevor Moore, too. Like, those two guys, and then uh, Diablo. Like, those three guys, young guys who, under the right coordination and in, in teaching with a good staff, could be good. But if it's Raider to tradition and we, you know, hire another shit staff, they'll probably be bad again. Um, but even with that, like I said, if you took out Unique, if you took out Max and you took out Hayward, this defense would be terrible. Absolutely fucking terrible. Now on to... I guess let's talk about Zay Jones. Because I wanted to say this last week, but I didn't. I don't know why the fuck we keep feeding him the ball like we do. Now, I understand he might be the best wide receiver we have left out of this shit situation with rugs and everything. Possibly. But the way we keep force-feeding him the ball like so not the last drive we had to win the game there, but the one before it, where Carr threw the interception. Why, and this is even before that, but why the fuck are we not putting Deshaun Jackson out there more? Like, I don't know if it's like an age thing and he can't, like he just doesn't have the cardio anymore or if he doesn't know the system, but if he doesn't know the fucking system by now, there's probably no fucking hope for him. But we brought, and I've said this, I think, fucking almost every video since we've signed him pretty much. Why the fuck is he not the one going far and deep? Now, there's probably a logical explanation for it that I don't know. But, I mean, to the simple man like me, that's why we brought him in. Why is Zay Jones who, and we threw it deep to him like three or four times this game. And he pretty much dropped everyone or he couldn't keep up with it. Like him and Derek Carr's chemistry just isn't there. And I don't, I don't fucking understand. Why is he the deep ball guy when we brought in D-Jax? Now d might not be what he used to be, obviously. But he's still fucking fast. Just put him out there, man. Now on to the, oh my God, I just knocked something off my table. Holy shit. So angry, I'm just waving my arms around. That was good comedic timing, though, because we're going to move on to the fumbling problem that this offense has. I don't know what's up with it. Between the fumbling problem and our wide receivers and in running backs and tight ends with Moreau dropping passes in, in, in recent memory now, in these past few weeks, it's just fucking, it's head-scratching because this used to be a team where we didn't really fumble. We didn't really drop that many passes either. But these past, like, three to four weeks, that's just, like, it's what we've been about. It's just fumbling, muffing punts, dropping passes. I mean, it, it's just getting fucking old. I don't know if that, I really don't know how to fix that. I'm not a fucking guru. I don't know. I, I You kind of want to sit there and say it, it possibly is, coaching like players getting into a slump not being as disciplined or something like that's where my mind goes but I would be speaking out of my fucking ass if I said I knew that was the problem or like that was a solution I should say I have no idea so but that shit needs to be cleaned up and obviously Derek Carr fumbling again on a sack um that problem continues but fuck you know who who really knows and Really, I only have two things left to say, and the main one about the entirety of the game I'll get out of the way. That was such a boring fucking game. Such a boring game. Such and such and such a boring fucking game, man. I mean, the offense was bad versus this depleted Browns defense especially in their secondary car through for like two thirty today, which isn't terrible. Don't get me wrong, but that's like, 
that should have been a 500 performance if we had a decent team, and we just fucking didn't. I mean, I understand our wide receivers can't really get open consistently to really help him out, and our offensive line just really isn't good at fucking blocking the ball. But it was just sad. They barely, like, at I wouldn't even say they looked good. Now, I know there's going to be stats people who come at me and probably be like, well, you know, fucking percentage-wise, they were this and that, and they've, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, from the fucking eye test, man, you dropped 16. You dropped 16 points against a Browns team who is depleted. Fucking depleted. The offensive line still can't run block well. Really, I mean, they really can't. We were 6 of 13 on third downs, which just isn't fucking good. We had seven penalties again, a fumble, an interception. It just wasn't a clean game. It's not shit you want to see. It wasn't fun to watch. It was fucking boring. It was disgusting. And I would have much rather watched this on Saturday. Um, just because at least we would have blamed it on weather and not because of how bad this fucking team is. We at least would have had an excuse for this offense. But that was terrible to watch. I can't wait for Olsen to be gone. I can't fucking wait for Passaccia to be gone. And at this point, I'm pretty much, I can't wait for uh, Bradley to be gone. Even though he hasn't done a terrible job, like he hasn't, but I just I want everything to be gone with this team. I want a complete, fresh restart for this team from the fucking top down. I just want, I just want a complete re. And this is fucked up to say. Cause we're, I mean, we're seven and seven in the playoff hunt. We're like two teams, two or three teams out of the wild card spot, which isn't bad. But we have a like a not easy schedule coming up, so it's not like we're more likely not going to win out, especially with how we just fucking played this Browns team, who is once again has had over twenty people out, players and staff with either COVID or injuries, twenty plus people. That's not. I mean. It, even in a crazy hypothetical, even if it was just all backups, that's still depth that's not there. That's like 18 players who are not like, and that's like, if you went there right now, their fucking start, their quarterback was fucking out. Their backup quarterback was fucking out. They had a practice squad quarterback come out, and he played, we'll say, I mean, he actually did play decent. If his wide receivers and everyone wouldn't drop the fucking ball on him, he would have had a, a not a definitely not a monster game, but he would have had a, a pretty good fucking game if it wasn't for that. But I mean, fuck, I mean this Browns team kept it close the entire time. It like it's just sad on us. That's the thing. It just looks fucking bad on us. It really, really, really does. We won, but we lost. But that's the point of being a Raiders fan, really. Uh, you know, a 2000s Raiders fan, as you should say. I mean, you just, when you win, you lose. It was boring to fucking watch. It was, we played like shit for the most part. Remember to comment down below. Tell me what you thought about the game. Tell me what you think about the next three games coming up. Maybe we went out. Who the fuck? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe. I mean, fucking maybe, man. I doubt it. Doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. I mean, we got a chance against the Broncos, but they're looking okay. Like, their defense is looking good. Colts. I mean, that one's just a loss. Just because the Colts run the ball way too well. Jonathan Taylor is too fucking good. And then we're at home against the Chargers, which we should lose that one. But at this rate, I, actually, we'll probably get our shit pushed in on that one. But, yeah, 
Just give me your comments and your takes down below. I really need to hear some takes, man. Some funny ones, some bad ones, some good ones. Give me your thoughts. Subscribe if you liked it. Follow Fat Cave Studio on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, the Fat Cave YouTube and this YouTube is going to have new content starting in January, which is going to be fun. I can't reveal or say anything, but it's going to be fun, non-Raider related. But I figured I'd throw it out there. And I congrats fans on the win, but just remember tomorrow at work, just head, just hang your head low. When people bring it up, just kind of nod and just, you know, huh, yeah, yeah, we, hey, we won. You know, that's it. Don't fucking say anything more. Don't rub it in. Just let it fucking be. Let's just try to move on and hopefully beat the Broncos next week. Hopefully. Because I just now remembered I have a bet, a season-long bet. Uh, the Raiders over at the start of the year was at 7.5. And, and I locked that shit in at $5, which isn't much, but that's a lot to me because I'm poor as fuck. They just need one more win. And next week is our best chance at winning. So that's it. It's win next week and then lose the next two, and we're good. We're fucking good. All right, I will see you next week at, I guess, around 8, 8.30 on fucking YouTube. Unless COVID strikes again, which none of us would really be surprised. All right, later, fellas.